Okay, as promised, three killer bucks this time for this beyond the covers business. Yeah, guys, we finally got her done. We finally got her done. For those of you who have been following me, you probably knew what this was when I was talking about it in the preview. I'm going to use very few words at this particular moment, which is kind of rare for me, as you might know. <laughs> and I'm just going to show you the one, two, three we're going to be doing here. Ooh, we're about five minutes post taking this bad boy out right here and I'm still feeling the rush of handling my first FF1 man it is unbelievable but since, since this is supposed to be about going beyond the covers I'm not gonna spend too long showing you the cover but I know a lot of you would be curious to see it so there is some marble chipping as you can see the worst of it's right here um, this is a solid very good I would say after f briefly flipping through it you know what I was looking for some people have different preferences and what they're looking for in different types of books for me I didn't mind having um, the tanning on the white background it was more important for me to have full colors on this front cover and you know around the grade range I was looking for you're gonna find some dings here and there almost every time so I'm trying to get them positioned down in areas where they're hidden well and for me that's down in the gray areas or around here and wow man Whew. hate to toot my own horn but shit there she is huh FF1 guys alright time to flip through her and really get into this stuff alright then ladies and gents Finally going in. Ooh, that sounded dirty, didn't it? Okay. I'm being overly careful. <laughs> Handling her here the first time. And as many of the fan of the Marvel Silver Age will remember, this is how the FF start out with Mr. Fantastic shooting out a Fantastic Four signal into the sky out of the Baxter building. <laughs> There he is, standing with the gun, the smoking gun that shot the, uh, the smoke signal. And then we get our first introduction to our Fantastic Four. It's beginning here with Miss Sue Storm. With this ridiculous panel here that people like to talk about where it's like, okay, look, Sue, if you're invisible and you're in a rush, we get it, but do you really have to be pushing all the people out of the way? What's the point of turning invisible if you're just going to push them out of the way? Can't you just kind of dodge them they can't even see you but anyways i always thought that was funny there she is in the car still still tips still tips tips the cabbie good work oh man i'm not doing it justice justice here with my narration i'm already kind of dissatisfied with uh with the crap that's coming out of my mouth so maybe i'll just show you fewer panels look at the thing here though and talk a little less huh thing at the beginning was not looking quite <clears throat> what we would think of when we think of the thing now as you will see still kind of taking shape there with Mr. Kirby trying to figure out what to do look at him This panel right here is the one that has always struck me. I mean, it's a far, far cry, at least as far as the facial features go, <clears throat> from the thing that most of us think of, yeah? Yeah. And we get Mr. Human Torch. Boom. Look at that. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yes. Oh yes, melting rubber and all the rest on that car. In the beginning here, the torch looks more like 
a group of flames that combine to form a human-like body, rather than what he looks like now and would look like very soon, actually, even in the FF, which is more of the, a human that is on fire, like here. Let me just go over to number three real quick. You can see the difference. You see on number three already, you see the difference where he's got the lines on his body? You know what I'm talking about. It's the human on fire look rather than the, the actual bunch of flames. And I love seeing that old, very rare version of the torch. I just want to point something out. Probably my favorite thing of all about early issues like this is the hokiness of it. I mean, Mr. Fantastic reaching up and grabbing the rocket. <laughs> uh, literally, like, grabbing the rocket, using his powers to grab the rocket. I love it. It's just ridiculous, right? And the torch falling down. This is before the torch realizes he can fly, apparently. Because he needs to be rescued by <laughs> Mr. Mr. Fantastic. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff here that doesn't quite jive if you follow the logic of it. But that's okay. Setting that aside, this is just pure brilliance. You know, they're not worrying about <clears throat> keeping continuity uh, or what the fans will think necessarily. This is just Stan and Jack making a comic book the way that they thought a comic book ought to be made, right? And that's what it's touted for, and for good reason. It's just virgin brilliance as far as Silver Age stuff goes. This is the beginning of it all for me and for many others, of course. Not just me. Love the thing here in the beginning. Look at Ben having his first serious conversation with Mr. Fantastic. You don't have to make a speech, Big Shot. We understand. We've got to use that power to help mankind, right? <laughs> Mr. Fantastic is saying, right, Ben, right. Love it. Okay, and now we get into some of the stories that I have never read before, believe it or not, because I've never read the latter half here with the Mole Man. So this is going to be fantastic for me. Oh, God, look at, wow. That is not what I thought they would draw <clears throat> their monster like. You know, of course, this was coming out right at the tail end of pre-hero pre era comics where um, monster comics and suspense comics and those kinds of things were really popular. Kirby's famous for those monster covers uh, that he did early on, and a lot of others are too, but just to you know, draw a connection there. And In the beginning here, you can see that they were really kind of it's a hybrid in between a superhero comic and one of those monster comics because they're really focusing a lot on the monster. Again, more monsters. Looks like Mr. Fantastic is roping one around the neck right there. And then being used as a parachute. Man, he keeps saving Johnny from falling, doesn't he? Common theme here in the first issue, I guess. <laughs> that and tragedy striking with superheroes, which of course was a new idea. Or at least very unusual. You know, I'd have superheroes that were this um, easy to relate to. I made mistakes. Didn't do things perfectly, right? We're not supermen, so to speak. We're just dealing with the circumstances they were dealt. that. Look at that. Gorgeous, huh? Great shot of the Mole Man there. Wow. I like that a lot. I like that very much. And here we got the end of the story. The Mole Man's secret. And we're already at uh, 20 pages here. I cannot wait to read this. Put down the camera and actually read it. I should have done that first. But uh, that's alright. Yeah, see we're already on page number 20 here. And I think we're going to be going for, what, maybe 24 pages in this first issue? Let's see. This takes us to 22. Look at the thing battling. Awesome. Even then, Kirby's doing some freaking... Woo! Seminal stuff, man. Seminal stuff. I should stop talking. Okay. 
I said I was going to. Oh man! <laughs> oh man, I'm giddy. I'm giddy again. That's what these comics do to me. Make me like a kid again, huh? Or just like a retard, depending on your point of view. <laughs> uh, look at him here, though. Classic. Classic. And then, of course, we got a little more monster action. Great shots, man. Huh. Little mole man. About to get stuffed, boy. That's page 24 right there. It's still going. Wow, how many pages is... Okay, 25 pages, it looks like, is the initial story. That's nuts. I didn't realize the first... Uh, not story. The first issue was that long. Wow. Sorry for the disjointed uh, review there of FF1, guys, but this really wasn't meant to be a play-by-play -play of the story. I just wanted to uh, quickly go through these panels with you just to show off some of the art. And time to flip this bad boy around, and uh, that'll be that. Let me show you the back cover here, boys. Here, one sec. We got our back cover. Yeah. There she blows. Time to move on to number two and number three. Okay, jumping right into it. Right into it. Number two. It is so fun to watch how they progress. I'm telling you. I just get such a kick out of it. The thing is still looking like a brown marshmallow man. <laughs> and on this cover, you can see that the Fantastic Four are not really portrayed as a superhero team yet. It kind of just looks like a, a group of average Joes, right? It's not until issue three where you really start to see that theme of them having the costumes for the first time and the fantastic car right there, right? But I'm skipping ahead. Let's jump in here with the scrolls and Fantastic Four number two. Great big shot here on the splash page of the thing. And I've actually already gone through this book once I remembered just now <laughs> as I was opening this book up on another Beyond the Cover. So I'm gonna go very quickly through this FF number two spend a little bit more time on number three. I'm not going to talk about the story really at all. Just get some fun shots here of our favorite characters from early, early on. Prisoner of the Scrolls. I'm sure it was meant to be read that way and no other way. <laughs> Kirby always seems to find a way to draw servicemen, doesn't he? You ever notice that? More than any other artist, when Kirby's involved, he finds a way to, more often than not, bring army or other types of military into the plot. I have noticed. Probably because of his time in World War II. Look at this. Love this panel, man. Love it. Great perspective there by Kirby. Foreshadowing <clears throat> some of the greatness he was going to bring. Huh? And of course, I'm always liking the scrolls. And this is the punchline. I'm not going to give it away. I gave it away in my other video. But basically, comic books save the day here, using comic books to trip to trick the scrolls. That beep was my uh, oven for my breadsticks, so I got to take priority, fellas. We got to get through this FF2 here, so I can get some breadsticks and then wash up again, so I can handle these books raw. <laughs> How's that for honesty? Oof! Look at the thing pin up. Always have loved that. Fantastic. Mm. 
More monsters. Just for the fun of it, huh? Gotta have some monsters here and there. Making that transition over to the superhero comic genre. Took a little bit of time. Alright, that's it for issue number two. Moving on to number three here after I have a little sustenance. Yep. There's the beeping. You heard it. <laughs> Alright then. Now for number three, huh? Speaks for itself. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful stuff now at this point, undoubtedly. By any uh, meter stick. By anybody's measuring stick. This is a, a major step forward. <clears throat> you can see it. I mean, it just looks so polished compared to what we've been seeing before, huh? Not that I don't like one and two. They're incredible, but the difference is striking. All of a sudden with number three. Ooh, there we go. Feeling a little bit better. I have some breadstick in my tummy. I'm trying to go through this faster, though, than I probably naturally will like to go, so that we can keep this video shorter. Oh man, a diagram of the Baxter building? Yes. Yes, yes. Awesome. Oh, torch pinup. Boom. It's so big, I gotta back out here with the camera. Gorgeous. <clears throat> I feel like I keep reusing the same words. Oh, there's the same monster here, huh? Siju, the monster from Mars. Let's look at the details that Kirby's giving us here. Huh? But dude, look at this stuff. And this is why I should just stop talking. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I want to see if I'm an FF fan. Ooh, look at the torch here, man. Wow. What a shot. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh, we have our first fan page in issue number three. Look at that. Our first fan page. All right, this is worth taking the time to read. Let's read what the first fans of Fantastic Four had to say, huh? This will be interesting. Hopefully. <laughs> Sometimes editors' pages, uh, letter to the editors' pages are interesting. Dear editor, you know, rather than reading through each one, I'm just going to do this so that you can pause, guys, if you want to read them yourselves. Because that's the kind of thing that's hard to find on your own, you know, if you don't have one of these to leaf through. Oh wow, what a page. Huh! Mr. Fantastic playing the wheel of the car. Great visual storytelling going on. Just from what I'm picking up from panel to panel. I don't know about what you guys think, but... The masters at work, huh? All right then, boys and girls. That was it for the one, two, three punch. Uh, and what I think will probably be the last video I do for a bit here. Here's the back cover for those who like to see. It's a little bit ratted up on the left edge and bottom. You see there? Yeah, that's the worst of it. Big old ugly hap happening down there. Anyways, Whew, there she blows, one, two, three. I'm emotionally exhausted just from the journey, guys. That was something else.